Hey guys, I wanted to update the pledged delegate tracker before heading into our next contest, which is coming up tomorrow, the New Hampshire primaries. So Iowa, 40 out of their 41 pledged delegates have been divvied up. There's still a contested that last pledged delegate, and it'll all come down to whether they fix the errors in their numbers or not that could put Bernie Sanders over the top. In terms of the overall number of state delegate equivalents, which would give him the lead in the state, which would give him that final pledge delegate. But if that doesn't happen, then it would go over to Pete Buttigieg. So there still is that one pledge delegate left up for grabs to be debated over. But beyond that, all of the rest of those pledge delegates have been divvied up accordingly. And starting off here, really disappointing showing from Joe Biden. He ends up getting the fourth most number of pledged delegates from Iowa, so he was able to pick up six. Bernie Sanders is currently sitting at 12, and again, like I said, if they go through the data and correct the errors, it looks like he has a pretty strong possibility of getting 13 pledged delegates, but if that doesn't happen and they keep the numbers how they are, then he will be staying at uh, 12 pledged delegates. Michael Bloomberg he was essentially a non-factor in Iowa. He picks up zero. Elizabeth Warren was able to grab eight pledged delegates. And then Pete Buttigieg, he's currently sitting on 13. And the math just happened to work out really well for Mayor Pete, even though he lost by a decent margin in the first choice. And then he was able to shrink that a bit in the final alignment, but still losing by about two and a half thousand votes, about 1.5 percentage points. But the math calculated out to benefit him at the end of the day where he's currently pulling in 13 pledge delegates. Tom Steyer also wasn't much of a factor in Iowa. He picked up zero. Now, Amy Klobuchar actually has an argument that she probably got screwed just as much as anyone throughout this whole Iowa caucus process because she ended up getting around 264 state delegate equivalents, which is right around half the amount that Buttigieg and Sanders were able to grab, but she only picks up one pledge delegate at the end of the day. She had the lowest percentage of state delegate equivalents that actually converted into those pledged delegates. A really unfortunate situation there for the Minnesota senator, a state that she had to do pretty well in given the fact that it's bordering to Minnesota. But actually what we're seeing from Klobuchar, it seems like she's closing with some strength in New Hampshire. We'll see if she's able to surprise or not in that particular primary. And then also Andrew Yang got pretty screwed throughout this process as well in Iowa, just given how these caucuses shape up where he got a reasonable amount of votes on the first ballot, but essentially he wasn't able to reach that 15 percentage point threshold in a large number of these caucuses. So then his voters had the option to realign behind other candidates or just simply not vote. And at the end, he only got 22 state delegate equivalents. And that converted into zero pledged delegates on the statewide level. So that gets us into a situation where we have 40 out of the 41 pledged delegates from Iowa divvied up between these individuals. And again, that last pledge delegate is going to come down to who ends up winning the most number of state delegate equivalents whenever they get around to figuring that whole mess out. So that gets us right now to a point where you can see that these candidates still have a long way to go before they actually reach the 1,990 pledged delegates needed to win on the first ballot at the convention. Throughout this process, I'm going to continue to update you guys with this pledged delegate tracker, putting in how many pledged delegates these candidates are getting in these different races, adding them up, and then getting a percentage of how close that they're getting to the number needed to win the nomination. Once this particular percentage gets up to 100%, then you're finally into a situation where a candidate has reached the threshold to win on that first ballot. So I appreciate you guys stopping by again for today's video. Consider subscribing for more, and I hope to see you guys back here for my next video.